Welcome back to Let's Tab 59. As you can see, me and the mic are out on the ground again. I hope uh, you enjoyed Mike's story. If you haven't seen the uh, interview I do with Mike, he's a RRW veteran, Royal Regiment Wales veteran. If you haven't seen that video, it is about an hour and 20 long, but bear with it, I think it's a cracking interview. And Mike tells a fantastic story of, of his time before he joined the army, during the army, later as a private military contractor out in Iraq and then uh, his life a little bit after that. So if you haven't seen that video of Mike in it, please take a look at it. Now, after we've done that video, in, in the, how we are now, it's, it was last night, um, Mike said to me afterwards, oh, I made a couple of mistakes of names and I made um, a couple of things I, I forgot to mention in that video. So we thought we'd come out today on the ground, have a little gentle stroll around tab, and Mike just wants to make a few corrections or amendments, if you like, uh, to that interview video that we've done, what was last night. And then also he wants to talk about one of the deployments while he was a serving soldier that he forgot to mention. He went through, if you've seen the video, I like say you'll see all the, he talks about his various deployments he had in his 10 year service for the British Army. And he forgot to mention one of them. It was an operational tour, but it was a deployment all the same. And it's quite an interesting one. So what we do now, I'm going to shut up, pass you over to Mike, and Mike will give you the lowdown on the bits and pieces he wanted to mention and didn't. Down to you, Mike. Hi, everybody. Right, to start off with, I would apologise for not mentioning my son's name, Dalan. I mentioned all my other children and stepchildren except Dalan. So, Dalan, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, I do apologise. A lot going on last night. And the other um, apology I want to make, it wasn't Private Thomas in the Warrior in Bosnia with Vani. It was... Private Lloyd, and I do apologise for getting those wrong. So, if anybody's watching, so knows Lloyd, I'm sorry. And the other thing we'll talk about is when we deployed to Jamaica, <laughs> Jamaica for a a month tour of Jamaica, and <laughs> that was jamming it. What an experience that was! So we flew out to Heathrow Airport on a normal commercial flight. With we were a company, a, with support company attached. There was a, a detachment of anti-tank platoon and mortars attached to the uh, A Company One platoon. So we're on the commercial flight out of Heathrow to King, Ken, Kingston, and nobody in A Company was allowed to drink. Oh. But on the plane, they were giving out bottles of wine with the food, and all result. the bottles of wine came back down the plane to contact went out. Do you? Know? <laughs> yeah, I heard. I could see the smoke <laughs> as well gas guns going off everywhere and we got drunk basically anti-tank platoon and the uh, mortar detachment at the back how unusual is that for soldiers going on a, on, on a tour somewhere to have a drink who'd have thought who'd have thought yeah and uh we got a little bit drunk and clive deaton my platoon sergeant if you're watching this clive get in touch uh, had a few too many to drink and basically fell down the stairs off the plane and landed at the feet of the Sar Major. <laughs> Absolutely hammered. In Jamaica? In Jamaica, on Kingston Airport on the runway. And that was his, that was our start of the, <laughs> the, tour. the tour. So we were taken to um, like a Coast Guard camp in Kingston, where we were told that we can't go to our camp in Port Antonio because it's flooded. Because the Americans who were there before us had 19 hours of rain a day <laughs> for a month and the whole place was flooded. So we sat in this camp for about two or three days. The rain stopped, it sort of dried out. We moved into the camp and the whole camp, if anybody can remember this from the RRW, was on four pallets high. Oh, yeah. All the tents were on four pallets because the, the, <laughs> the water was running under. You thought he was going to Jamaica, he was in the sun. Yeah, it was worse <laughs> than that. <laughs> And after a couple of days, it all drained, dried out, everything, the pallets were taken away and the, it just turned in, well, I think it rained twice then in the whole month. And our main objective, our main job in Jamaica was training Jamaican Defence Force on the use of the S-80, because we had given them the SLR yeah. when we changed over and then they were given the S-80. What so was we, their thoughts on having this S-80 malarkey? They didn't like it at all. Weren't happy? No, they weren't happy at all. They, <laughs> were, they were like, what is this plastic, pathetic, you know. Did you get a chance to use SLR? I No, I never used SLR. Oh. I fired a 303 Lee Enfield, but not yeah. never an SLR. So that was the main job, was to 
do a bit of jungle training and teach the Jamaicans how to use this SAT. So that we could, so British Aerospace or BA, BAE Ship could, could sell a load of SAT. SATs to the Jamaican Defence Force yeah. or whatever it was. And that was the idea to get uh, them taken to the ranges. Underpaid sales. Yeah. Basically, yeah. So when we got there, we were split up into groups and there was different things that we had to do. So there was jungle training, five days of jungle training. Then you were in the jungle for five days uh, training exercise, you know, testing what you've just Was it learned. minging? Oh, horrible jungle. Everything <laughs> wanted to sting you and bite you and <laughs> even the trees attacked you. <laughs> You lean against some of the trees and they'd have thorns on them and they would stick in your hands. And Carrying loads of water, I suppose. Oh, loads of water, loads of weight. It's just jungle. You're just fighting your way through. Well, it's, I've never experienced anything, anything like it. Worse than the jungle in Hong Kong, then, or where you? Uh, yeah, I think it was worse than Hong Kong. Yeah. Definitely. Different and sort of jungle. So w I convinced, well, we all convinced Clive Dayton, our sergeant at the time, to get us on the first training, jungle training. To get that out of the way so then we'd have the five days in the jungle spider and then we had basically then after that adventure training leave camp guard well and, and our type leave uh, yeah you could have five days anywhere in jamaica you wanted <laughs> so we, i just stayed well a lot of us just stayed on the camp food was there accommodation was there yeah yeah and we just bounced around jamaica from our camp in port antonio so we got the jungle done the jungle training what an experience what some really skillful men teaching us from, how the, to, from the jamaicans well a bit of everybody i think jamaicans and there was a lot of other forces there not exactly what what they were british special forces but there's no wonder special forces i don't know if they were but there was people teach uh, how to make shelters how yeah. to make traps how to do man traps and oh right you know, the old log falling from yeah trees, dead, lo spikes, dead, fall. dead fall logs all like how to make a shelter did i sneak up on your house then <laughs> <laughs> And then we were shown you know, what to eat, what not to eat, how to make fires, and I always make a shelter. How long were you in the, bush, in the jungle for? It was five days training, yeah, and then five days straight in. Literally living in living the, in the jungle for five days, and then did we you get up. any injuries or anyone get bitten by um, no, venomous no snakes? Or um, my mate Mac um, ate too many plantains and got casuvacked with some summer gig. <laughs> That's but oh, and on adventure training. Private Richards, if you're watching this, get in touch, girl. Ended up having an accident on a speedboat. Oh, no. <laughs> Ready. A war wound. Why did you get a war wound on a speedboat, Jamaica? <laughs> we were doing a thing called wave hopping. I don't know if anybody's done this on a speedboat. I don't recommend it, really. You stand on the front of the speedboat, is it the bow, is it? The yeah, front. yeah, the sharp, pointy bit. The sharp, pointy bit of the speedboat. Yeah. <laughs> if any naval guys out there, I apologise yeah, for that. That's pongos. <laughs> and you have a knotted rope, and you stand there and hold the rope. And he just drives out to sea and hits the waves, like ramping the waves. Oh, that sounds like a good idea, Mike. And it's like a rodeo type thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who put the hand so, up for that detail? Of course. <laughs> so, uh, quite a few of us had fallen into the water. No or shit. We'd fallen into the boat. But <laughs> Skull, somehow, when he went, the boat hit the wave and went up, his feet came off the deck and his hands were still holding on to the knot. Oh. So he's pointing down with his head as the boat hits the next wave. Ouch. And his face connects with the deck. There's only one winner in that situation, isn't there? And that the was boat. the deck of the boat, yeah. and it smashed his nose and all oh, his teeth out. Mate. And when he rubbed his nose, it opened all the way up like a banana. Ah. So, Skull, I hope you've had uh, plenty of treatment and get that sorted. I've had your teeth sorted. Did he stay in the army after that? Yeah, he Excellent. stayed in the army after that, yeah. He's all right, like? Yeah, he was all right. Just that he Because he back, back to UK? No, he went to have dental work and stitches in Kingston. And all he was in back on the tour. Back in, back in the game. Back in the game, yeah. And then another thing we were doing was um, like hearts and minds. We were oh, yeah. going to schools to like paint schools or repair, or there was care homes we'd go to and like do some like odd jobs around the care. I mean, there was press there taking yeah. pictures of us nailing boards up and stuff. And then the rest of the time we were just partying on the beach. Amazing people. Now, you remember you telling me something about that to her um, the other day. And you mentioned, because you just finished reading a book about well, an autobiography about Errol Flynn. Yeah. And somewhere in that book is a mention of something he owned out there. Yeah, near the island and the Titchmarsh Hotel, if I got that correct, was 
an island, uh, a hotel in Port Antonio and Navy Island was just off the coast. And in the 50s, Port Antonio was the in place to be in Jamaica. The jet set. All the Hollywood. All right, yeah. All went to his hotel. Sure place we'd have rocked up at. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'd have been at the head of the table. Don't forget them two lunatics. Yeah. Get them in there. So all the Hollywood elite yeah. go to this hotel. And then if I'm, if I'm correct, it was destroyed in a fire in the 60s or 70s. And then the rest of the building was knocked down by some tornado in the 80s. And yeah. what was left was like one level of room. So the engineers oh, right. put 10 sheets on it and turned it into offices and <laughs> accommodation for the like officers and the senior ranks. And we were in tents at the garden. <laughs> yeah, it was a really interesting tour. Lovely people, the Jamaicans. Very welcoming everywhere we went. And how long was you out there for again? A month. A month. A month, yeah. Great tour. Fantastic tour. Did you bring back any souvenirs to UK? No. No diseases? No. <laughs> no, nothing at all. Nothing at all. Sunburn. Sunburn. Oh, I'd really bad. And it, you know, those of you veterans know, if you get sunburn in the military, self-inflicted, self-inflicted wound, you can get charged for it. Yeah. And we went yachting in. If I was those of you listening, you're last always video. yachting. You was yachting in Hong Kong, yeah. Yet. Didn't like it. That was my first time on a yacht. Didn't like it. And with the spray and the wind, you don't realise you're burning. Yeah. And I got off the yacht and I was like a lobster. Oh, but no, just about a little tiny white Welshman <laughs> getting burnt to crisp. Loads I come it. from the valleys, boy. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> and this elderly gentleman turned up with a piece of cactus, which I know now was aloe vera at the time. I didn't know what this was. And he rubs this jelly stuff all over my shoulders and my arms. And my sunburn went. Sorted. And that saved me from having to either stick with the pain of carrying a pack through the jungle or go sit and get or, charged or get charged so yeah that was jamaica that was it that was a really good tour well thanks for that mike no worries thank yeah, you just mike's little update and a few amendments from his interview video um interestingly i'm hoping to do a few more interviews with some other veterans that i've got lined up hopefully if i can bring all that together it's difficult because some of the veterans that i know old mates of mine that are scattered around the country a bit so it's it's difficult uh sort of marrying up with them to get the interviews done but i think the next one that i'm doing i think i mentioned it last night or on the interview of mike will be an interview with a pads brat a child of a soldier a pads brat so that could be quite interesting so that's it for today hope you're all well me and mike are going to pick his pace up now once we get off this selfie stick we can get a bit of a wiggle on and finish our tab around here. So, as always, troops, stay tuned. If you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, please consider it. I'm not saying do it. I'm saying consider it. But until the next time, troops, and it won't be long, remember, let's tab. Let's tab. <laughs>